Hello and welcome to this Gibbs Cam Tech Tip. In this video we'll take a look at projecting polar and cylindrical, also known as rotary milling toolpath, onto a solid. I'm on a four axis mill but the same principles apply on a C axis lathe. So let's jump in. We'll take a look at enhancing this basic polar and cylindrical part by, by projecting the toolpath onto a solid face to create tapers and flat areas in the toolpath. Now this toolpath is simply a pocket wrapped around a two inch cylinder. The geometry looks like this when it's wrapped and it looks like this when it's unwrapped or flat. To create the geometry, I started out by defining the work group as wrapped. By right clicking on the name of the work group, going to work group info and selecting the wrapped checkbox. Now once I've defined the work group as wrapped, I can display the geometry either as wrapped or unwrapped by selecting this button labeled wrap work groups on the floating toolbar. And it just toggles back and forth between showing the geometry flat and showing that geometry wrapped around a cylinder. Additionally, when uh, I have my geometry palette open, I'm just going to go to points and explicit points for an example. When the geometry is unwrapped or when the wrap work group button is, is up, I get my normal X, Y, and Z values to uh, define geometry as flat. But when I click the wrap work group button, it not only wraps my geometry, but now my dialog is asking for X, A for angle, and R for radius to um, define geometry as wrapped. So to get started, I created a new work group, right clicked on the name of the work group, went to work group info, defined the work group as wrapped, and then I created a point with my wrap work group button activated using explicit point and created a point at X0, A0, and R1 because I need the geometry to be on a one inch radius. And that basically just creates a point at the origin. Let me turn my coordinate system grid off. You'll be able to see it. And then I created a point at X minus 18 and A of 360 times nine because I need nine wraps I need this toolpath to wrap around the cylinder nine times over the 18 inches for a two inch pitch. And that's also on a one inch radius. And then when I draw a line between these two, so I just go to line, select the two points and hit enter or my single feature button. And it creates that line. And that is a line. It's just wrapped around the cylinder. And then I connect the line to the points and I end up with this and unwrapped it looks like this okay so at this point uh, what I, I need to know what my specifications on the part are and what I need is a quarter inch wide rib left standing this is going to be on a two inch pitch so I needed a line that is offset from this along the direction that my quarter inch dimension is, which in my case was along the, the uh, X axis. Uh, if it were normal to the rib, then I would just do a parallel line. Uh, but I copied this and translated it a three quarters of an inch in the X axis. Uh, the three quarters is because this line will be the right edge of my rib and the other line when it's wrapped around will be the left edge of my rib. If we go to this work group, we can see the geometry that I actually used. So in the X axis, there's an inch and three quarters from this line to this line. Um, that will form, again, when it wraps, this will end up on this side, uh, giving me the quarter inch rib that I'm looking for. And then to close this out to make a pocket, I just drew a vertical line at X zero and another one at X minus 18 and connected those lines to these two lines to give me my pocket. Additionally, I defined this line and this line as air 
That's why they're red. They're defined as air. So that the tool starts on the outside and comes into the pocket and cuts cleanly through those two faces. So when I wrap this, I have my quarter inch rib. And that's how I created the tool path uh, that we looked at a moment ago. This tool path here. All right, now what I want to look at is how to project this tool path to create a taper, which would be needed if we were using this as, say, a compression screw. So the, the strategy that most people attempt is to create a revolve shape with the you know that follows the floor of this pocket and then they create their tool path projecting onto that so if I load this back up and select this and in my process I want to make sure that I have under my solids tab project 2d tool path clicked that tells the software to project this tool path onto the solid uh, additionally, we also on the rotate tab want to make sure we have polar and cylindrical selected so that it wraps the tool path. But when I create this tool path, and let me make sure I have enough depth here as well. So I'm saying the top of my parts at one inch, uh, I probably need more than that. I think that's about a half inch deep. And I say recreate that tool path. What you'll see is that it's not following the cylinder. It's not following the shape. Uh, there is just a tiny little bit at the very beginning where it may uh, be controlled by this. And the reason that that occurs is if I unwrap that geometry, this is the geometry that the toolpath is calculated on. In other words, the toolpath is calculated before it is wrapped. So it's creating toolpath for this flat pocket and then wrapping the toolpath. So you can see that the only area that would be controlled by this would be any, you know, any area that's inside this pocket flat that's over that solid model. So this is not the model that we need in order to con uh, correctly control the depth of this tool. What we need is a plate that looks like this. Now, if I go to a front view, you'll see that this plate has the same profile on top that our model has, that, that our cylinder had. Uh, but this plate covers the entire area of our pocket. But it has a taper down, then a smaller taper down, and then a flat area. So if I create my tool path on the geometry, let me put this away. If I create my tool path on this geometry, and it doesn't matter whether it's wrapped or not, using this solid as my projection and recalculate it, and we go to a front view, you'll see that my tool path is following this taper. Uh, this is a steeper taper, then a shallower taper, and then a flat area. Uh, we get the tool path that we were looking for. Now we would probably want to take this in multiple passes, but for the sake of time, uh, I will try cutting this just in one pass. So we can see that we're starting out shallow. I believe that's about an eighth of an inch deep. And then we're working our way down to where we're uh, about a half inch deep. Go to a front view, you can see clearly that we're shallower here, getting deeper, and the tip of the tool is just following that model that we selected. Now I'll pause the recording for a moment, let this finish up cutting, and then come back to look at the finished part. So here's what our part looks like following our roughing process. Uh, we start out shallow, uh, we have a taper coming down to along in this area here, and then we have a shallower taper down to this area here, and then it's flat from that point out. So this is an example of how you can control the depth of simple two-axis rotary or polar and cylindrical tool path uh, to create a, a variable taper part uh, without having the five-axis module.
In this tech tip, we've taken a quick look at projecting polar and cylindrical tool path onto a solid uh, to control a variable depth pocket or contour. If you'd like additional information on this or any other GibbsCam topic, please reach out to your GibbsCam reseller. And if you have suggestions for future tech tip videos, you can leave those in the comments below.